everybody, Mark Speck the Comics, and I'm back. This time, I'm going to show you the three books I ended up picking up at the uh, most recent Bruno and Company Auctioneers uh, comic auction. If you're interested in seeing what books I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. All right, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get in timely fashion. So I got my three books that I bought from the Bruno and Company Auctioneer House. That last auction that ended in end of May. Ended up picking up the books a few days later. Just haven't had the time to record them. Free night tonight after I um, you know, did all the stuff I needed to going to show you the books I got. Um, if you guys saw the uh, auction preview I did two days ago, you may or may not have seen it. Um, it was for Wednesday night's comic auction that, you know, at the time of the recording now has concluded. Ended up buying two books. Um, nothing crazy, just a couple of spec plays. And uh, I'll end up picking those up, you know, this week. I'll make that video next week. You guys can check that out. Um, so this auction that had concluded end of May was bar none, probably the best comic auction that they've had, just like in the terms of uh, volume, variety, and um, just value. And uh, I was really surprised. It was like, like I said, anything from modern big books to really you know scarce golden age books they had there they had some for example early asm 1 3 5 14 20 you name it 300s they had several of those they had uh ff1 uh, i think it was a 20 they had a coverless copy they had an x-men one that was a restored one um and then some golden age books they had some Wonder Woman, they had some, basically the, the creme a la creme book that was for the auction was the Marvel Mystery Comics 9, which was the second cover appearance of Namor. That one ended up selling for, I want to say around 32, 34,000, which was a little below the mark what I thought it would have hit. Because I think it was two months ago, the book doesn't come up for auction often. A restored 4.0 sold for right around 32000 So I was expecting this to go maybe $40,000, 45000 um, Maybe at a larger auction house, it may have hit that. I don't know. Um, so I was a little surprised on that one. But uh, it was just a fantastic, fantastic auction. Um, I'm going to show you the three books I got. And... Uh, I'll tell you how much I spent. Um, definitely the most expensive um, comic book I did purchase, and I'll show you that after. The total lot also, you know, most expensive uh, lot I spent on comics as well. Um, so I'll start you with um, the least expensive. So this book, for some reason, always shows up on their auctions. I don't know why. I don't know if a ton of people have this book and maybe that's why the prices are a little soft, but this character is loved by many DC fans. Never had the book. Um, great cover done by George Perez. Great story by Marv Wolfman. And uh, this is Tales of the Teen Titans, issue number 44 at a 9.6. Um, like I said, beautiful cover. This is, obviously, Dick Grayson becomes Nightwing. It's also the first appearance of Jericho. And um, this ended up going for, i just get my, I paid, what did I pay for this? About 30, 130. And it was funny, because another 9.6 went up today on that most recent auction and it sold for 150 so uh got a little lower on that one so that was pretty good that was a good win for me um this is just a great book to definitely invest in 
Um, like I said, Nightwing is a character that's been ongoing. You know, great series currently. I know some of my uh, buddies, uh, Burke Family, 54 Comics, big fan of Nightwing, and talks about how great the character is all the time. So uh, definitely a good book to spec on. You know, especially at those prices, you can't go wrong. So that was the first book. Second book, um, so I'll tell you, funny thing, there was a bunch of lots. I think there was like 400 lots, if I'm not mistaken. There was some early ASM books I was hunting. Um, I was looking at an ASM 5. Um, that was the first Doctor Doom crossover. Not crossover, but first Doctor Doom outside of FF. Um, I was looking at an ASM 14, lower grades. Because I was looking to, you know, buy a big book. And, um, and uh, there were a couple of uh, ASM 20s that I were looking at as well, along with ASM 300s. I, used, I, I had one before, but I sold it a while back. You know, those, that auction was, because it's such a huge lot, and it, you know, also had toys, cards, I believe. It lasted a while. It started, at, I think, 9 o'clock in the morning, and it went on until, like, I think, 2 in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it was a long day. And I was out. I was doing stuff. And um, I was looking at bidding at a couple of them. And then, like, obviously you're out, you know, in the wild doing your stuff. And the reception gets choppy. And then before you know it, you try to slide and bid. The lot closed. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Still a little under the weather. And, um, you know, there was a few books that I missed out on, you know, that I was you know, looking to get. There was also a Marvel Spotlight 5 that I thought I had won. I, had, I thought I had placed it like 1050 bid, and I thought I won, but then when I checked back, I didn't win it. So I was like, oh, crap, I still haven't bought any books. So <laughs> it was getting to be like at 1 in the afternoon. I was like, I want to buy something. So um, that Tales of the Teen Titans was the first book I got. Um, second book I got was, it's like another one of those books that I've always wanted. And I just didn't want to pay the overinflated prices that, you know, we were seeing last year during the pandemic. So, um, classic cover, you'll, you know what this is when you see it. It says Wolverine number one. Love this cover by Frank Miller. Uh, CGC 9.6, and it's a newsstand. Doesn't really matter. It's from, I think this book came on 86, no, sorry, 82. So, really, the directs are the less available um you know but i guess the higher grades are more desirable in the newsstands but uh, i paid 250 for this one so this was a pretty good deal i know these used to go for a lot more but right now the market's soft because of you know of the uh recession you know, people want to call it a recession but it pretty much is a recession you know or historically high inflation you know period but um you know, it is affecting comic prices too. So uh, from last year to this year, but uh, I picked this up for two fifty. I thought that was a great deal. Iconic cover. People love this book, and I um, was happy to get it. And uh, this was getting towards the end of the uh, auction. And yeah, they do their auctions. It's all alphabetical. And. Um, there was this one other book I was looking at. I was like, oh, this is a really cool book. You don't see it often go up for auction. And um, I was like, all right, I want to spend a good amount on one book. So uh, this book goes up, and they had a starting bid of uh, 2000 I was like, okay, I'll put in a bid, and uh, I'll see what happens if anyone else bids. So um, I put in a bid, and only one other puss, I think it was one or two people bid, yeah. And uh, that was it. So I ended up getting this book for a steal because they had it estimated at around, I think, four to $6,000. And uh, ended up getting this for $2,500. And uh, this is what I thought was one of the big steals of the auction. 
Wonder Woman number seven. And this is from, well, it says winter, winter of 1943. So it's a Wonder Woman for President cover. It, it is a World War II um, book. This came out, like I said, in 1943. It's just a fantastic cover. It's done by H.G. Peter. Just show you that real quick. Look at that. Just the, all that patriotism on there is just beautiful. And it's at a 3.5 off white to white pages. Um, there's a four page feature on Joan of Arc. And it, and it just says Wonder Woman for President. So, uh, <coughs> Wonder Woman, thousand years in the future. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's just a beautiful cover. And uh, I just couldn't let it go for when I saw it. It was like nobody was bidding on it. I was like, all right. Here's the back of it. Got a little Tootsie Roll ad. I know you guys like to see the ads in the back. These things are beautiful. So uh, this was the big purchase I ended up getting there. Um, all in all, I spent a little over, I think it was 3200 for all three books. Which, you know, considering this book alone was estimated at four to six, I did really well, extremely well. And I was really excited to pick that up, you know, because that book is pretty scarce. You know, single digit Wonder Woman does not come up for auction or sale often. I know there's, I want to say two as of this recording on eBay. One's a 0.5 and one's a 4.0 if I'm not mistaken. So uh, there's not many. Um, but yeah, that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm, I thought I'm ecstatic. These, these books are just fantastic. You know, when I make the previews, I, you know, hopefully you guys watch it. You know, it just it gives the, uh, gives you guys some awareness of other options where you can purchase books, you know, whether it's a common book or you can get a little bit cheaper than eBay or a really scarce, you know, golden age book like that, you know, so, uh, hopefully you guys found that, you know, helpful. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Rock Spectre Comics, out.